Hi and welcome to CG Dive. In this series, we cover the complete Blender 2 Unreal workflow for custom rigged characters. In this short chapter, I'll show you my approach for baking the animations from the control rig to the game rig. If you want to get early access to CG Dive videos, check out Patreon, Gumroad, and YouTube memberships. Okay, here is the baking process. This is going to be done manually, and I really hope that in the near future we'll have some sort of script to automate all of this. But for now, here is the manual approach that I'm using. I'm going to select my game rig, which I named root, and go to pose mode and select all bones. I'm going to make more room in the NLA, and I want to disable this option, the only show selected option, and that will allow me to see the NLA tracks for the control rig even though it is not selected. And now I can just star any of these tracks and that will activate the action that is on it. So for example, if I want to bake the jump, I'll star this track and I'll have the jump action activated. Even though these tracks are unchecked, when I star them, they become active. So let's say that first I want to bake the idle animation. I'm going to select it and I want to verify how long it is. It is 60 frames. And now with all bones of the game rig selected, I can go to Pose, Animation, Bake Action. And that will give me the Bake Action menu. But instead, what I usually do is I hover in the 3D view, press Spacebar or F3 for the search menu. And I search for Bake Action and select it from here. And now for these options, I can actually untick only selected bones because I want to bake all of the bones in the game rig. Or I can keep this option selected and simply select all bones. Either way is fine. I want to enable visual keying. Clear constraints I want to keep unchecked because if I choose this option, Blender will delete all constraints from this rig after the bake. And that will destroy the connection between the game rig and the control rig. And I don't want that. Clear parents is an option that actually only applies to object baking, not to bone baking. So you can keep it on or off, it doesn't matter. And you can check or uncheck override current action. In this case, it doesn't matter because I don't have an active action. So either way, a new action will be created. Generally, I have this option on. And Clean Curves is a new feature in Blender 2.92 and I haven't really explored it yet. So I keep it off for now. And then it is very, very important to set the end frame to the actual end frame of the action that I want to bake. In this case, that is 60 frames. And then I'm going to press OK. A new action was created for me. I'm going to call it idle and push it down. And that will push it down to the NLA tracks of the game rig. Let's say that next I want to bake the walk. I'm simply going to press spacebar again, choose bake action. And now all options are set as I need them. All I need to do is tweak the end, end frame. And I know that my walk is 24 frames long. The actual last frame of the action is on frame 25, but that keyframe is the same as the first keyframe. And if we leave it in, it is going to create a little bit of a slowdown in the walk cycle that is not desirable. So I'm going to send the end frame to 24 and click OK. Call this action walk and push it down. Next, I want to bake the jump. Same thing, bake action set the end frame to 18. Again, I'm cutting out the last keyframe to avoid this uh, repeating keyframe and bake it, call it run and push it down. Next, I want to bake the control idle, star it, bake animation. It is 60 frames long. I should probably set the end frame to 59 then, although for the idle animation that won't be that apparent, but let's cut the last keyframe from the action, press OK. Call the new action crouch idle and push it down. Next, I want the crouch walk. Let's check the length of my action. It is th 31 frames, so I want to bake 30. Bake action, send end frame to 30, press OK. Crouch walk, push it down. Now I want to bake the jump as well. It is 35 frames long, and that's how much I'm going to bake. The jump is not really a cyclic animation, so I'm going to include the last keyframe. Call the new action jump and push it down. 
And finally, I'll bake the stretch animation. It is 40 frames long. So bake animation, end frame to 40, press OK, call this action stretch, and push it down. And now I'm going to unstar this action. Okay, now I want to focus on the game rig. Uh, so I'm going to activate show only selected and that will only show me the tracks for the game rig. And now even though I have all of these new actions on the game rig, I cannot really play them because the whole rig is constrained to the control rig. To break the connection, I want to disable these uh, constraints and I can do that by selecting all bones and then alt clicking on the constraints. And that will disable the constraints for all bones. Disabling the constraints is also something that should actually be scripted. And I hope we'll have a script for that very soon. So now if I start any of these actions, for example, the crouch walk, the game rig will perform this action. I'm going to see the actual baked keyframes for this uh, game rig. Here's the run, the walk, idle, and that is the whole process of creating animations on a control rig and baking them onto a game rig. In the next part, we're going to export the whole character with all of the animations to Unreal. And for this purpose, we'll be using the send to Unreal add-on that was created by Epic Games. That is the workflow that I highly recommend, but I'm also going to show you manual FBX export just in case. Thank you for watching and special thanks to my patrons. Please click like and subscribe and see you in the next video.